But I'm back to talk about something very big. So, the Nats won the World Series. And for those of you that don't know, I am from DC, so this is pretty big. I'm gonna be talking about this in this video. So, let's get into it. So, to really understand how the Nats got to this point, we're gonna run it all the way back from the beginning. So we're gonna see how the Nats won the World Series and how it all started. After the first 50 games of the MLB season, 2019 of course, the Nats were 19 and 31. Yeah, 19 wins and 31 losses. They were an absolutely atrocious team. And a quote from uh, Martinez, the manager, after their loss, their 19, I mean their 31 loss, after the 50th game of the season, going 1931 of course, Martinez said that they were not out of it, the Nats just had to finish games. You can look up that quote. And, um, I mean he was right, they were not out of it now that they are World Series champs. So, at the 100th game in the season, the Nats were 50 and 50. They were the hottest team in the NL by a long shot. They were going off. It was crazy to see. They were since going 19 and 31, the best team in the league. And this continued the whole time. It kept going, it kept going. Across the entire MLB season, the Nats were the hottest team since losing the first, since those very bad 50 games. And the Nats were crazy. And they managed to sneak into the wild card and the rest is history, which I am about to explain. At first, we didn't even think the Nats would get by the wild card, right? I mean, it was it was three to one in, uh, it was three to one at the end of the game, it, it, about to be the end of the game. And the Nats just weren't hitting. Trey Turner had that home run and then the rest just, no one could hit. And then two people get on base, and I'll show the play right now. Juan Soto hits a pretty big shot, and the right fielder, it just sneaks right under his glove. The Nats have the lead, and the Nats will win that game. Then they moved on to the LA Dodgers, the supposedly best team in baseball, with Cody Bellinger, Kershaw, all those guys. And they managed in a five game to make it two to two. Somehow, just from amazing hitting from guys like Kendrick, Soto, Rendon, all of those guys were just hitting amazingly. And people like Strasburg and Scherzer were also pitching really well. And then game five, uh, Bueller is throwing an amazing game. He, in the last 21 innings, he set up one run. That, that one run happened that game. But still, he's pitching out of his mind. And the Nats can't hit off of him. And then for some reason, the, the, the Dodgers manager takes out an on fire Bueller for Clayton Kershaw. And we all know how Clayton Kershaw does in the postseason. Not well. Time after time again in big moments, Clayton Kershaw just isn't very good in the postseason. And then, that's where it all happened. Howie Kendrick hit the greatest hit of his career. Maybe except that one in the World Series, who knows. But still, a grand slam to lift the Nationals to the lead. And they would go on to win that game. An absolute shot by Kendrick and an amazing hit. Just unbelievable. Moving on to the Cardinals series, it, at this point it was evident the Nats were having fun right now. And maybe that's why they were so good, who knows, but they were just having fun with the baby shark and the dancing, it was crazy. And then when they went on to the Cardinals, they were for once not the underdog. Annabelle Sanchez pitched his amazing game, Strasburg did, everyone pitched well, and you know it was a pretty quick 4-0 sweep. And yeah, then it came, the World Series. Up 
fairly historic World Series. Not the greatest run by any means, but an amazing run by the Nats. They get to the World Series. Howie Kendrick won MVP uh, for the for the NL, and yeah, it's pretty crazy. Not not regular season MVP, but uh, for the NL Finals, he won Finals MVP. I mean, MVP. NL Finals MVP. Okay, I got it right. Okay, and they go on to play the Astros in the World Series after Jose Altuve hits a walk-off home run against the Yankees. Maybe the greatest hit I've ever seen in baseball to get the Astros to the World Series. And, uh, yep, the Nationals, oh, who guessed, come out on fire. Scherzer pitches the first game insanely well. Garrett Cole takes his first loss in like 21 games or something crazy like that. Zimmerman hits a home run, Soto hits a home run. And everyone's going crazy. Soto is an absolute shot, by the way. If you didn't see that. And yeah, it's, and they're off to the start. And then they win the next game 12-3, 12-3. And everyone's saying the Nationals have a good tight grip on that. Then a very crazy event in baseball happens. The next three games, the Nats have at home, they lose all of them. Their pitching is meh in those games, and their hitters are not hitting. I think they either scored three or two runs those entire three games. And they just got destroyed by the Astros at home. And that's when it all happened. Everyone was like, Nats win the road games, Astros win the road games. Like, And it was pretty weird. And then came uh, game six. The Nationals are on the verge of elimination here. And here it comes in. One of the craziest calls I've ever seen. Trey Turner runs a perfect line to the bag. Everyone's been doing it all game. Nothing wrong with it. And they say it's an interference. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dave Martinez goes crazy. The whole dugout goes crazy. And yeah, everyone's just kind of on fire. After that atrocious call, I don't even want to talk about that call anymore at this point. That was so bad. Then comes up Anthony Rendon. And you know, Anthony Rendon, one of the best players in the MLB, MVP candidate, honestly my pick for MVP. He is so good at hitting the baseball. How can I stress that? He comes out, games 3-2, and the dugout is on fire. They're all mad. Hits a quick home run. A quick home run. And, you know, they have won the game. After that, everyone is happy, and it's pretty amazing. Then game seven happened. Uh, that was a crazy game, like absolutely insane game. Uh, so to start off the game, Astros take a crazy lead, and it's 2-0 after lots of base running and all of that stuff. And then the Nats just can't hit they just can't hit that game it's pretty crazy and there's no one's hitting the baseball well and the Astros are fielding well the Astros are pitching well it's pretty crazy and then Anthony Rendon hits a home run a shot deep 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 it's gone and Anthony Rendon another stellar hit by him coming up clutch cuts the lead in half but Zach Greinke is still seven innings like 70 or 60 pitches on that and letting up one run an amazing game by him props to him then he walks Juan Soto and one of the worst management I've ever seen in my life uh Astros manager goes up takes him out for Will Harris honestly I'm not even that mad at Will Harris because I know he left that home run but still why would you take out Zach Greinke he's at 70 pitches in seven innings, he's pitching so well. You take him out. And then, who knows the rest? Will Harris on his second pitch. Howie Kendrick goes deep and takes the lead. And after that, the Nets did not look back. They hit a little bit more and they won the game. 